My guest today is headed to the Tony Awards on June 12th for the sixth time as a nominee. He's honored this year for his stunning work as Tevya the Milkman in Fiddler on the Roof. Here he is, boys, Danny Burstein. Yay. What's up? How's it going? Looking sharp, looking sharp. Thank you. Well, well, you know, let me just start right after this interview. You're literally going and collecting an Outer Critics Circle, an OCC award. That's right. For, for your stunning work as Tevin right. the Milkman. I'd walk over there. I'm going to grab a little something to eat probably okay. in between. But other than that. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. How, yeah. how is award season treating you? You are a pro. <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you could write a book about award season. Yeah, um, it's so far so good. You know, it's a busy time. Yes. But uh, on, on the other hand, this is really, on the other hand, listen to me, it's rubbing off. Uh, <laughs> on the other hand, there's, you know, really nothing bad about all this. Yeah. You know, you just go out and have a good time and, and you get to yeah. see friends like yourself and go to a lot of uh, different kinds of functions where yeah. people throw themselves at you and say <laughs> how wonderful you are. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's lovely, heady, and, and a lot of fun. Now your beautiful wife, Rebecca Luker, sat on that chair not very long ago. Yes. Because she was in Fun Home. Yes, what, I saw that How interview. great was, was she great. in Fun Home? And how great was that, was that interview? How great is she? I yeah, mean, you know, I didn't, you picked I a never good one. Got, thank you very much, I agree. <laughs> um, I never got to see the show exactly. I, oh, I so you watched like a run through. We, we were only we were on the same schedule, right? And she just finished this past yeah. Sunday, and yeah. so the only time I could see it was at a put in, right? Okay. So it was just me and the stage manager, basically. <laughs> uh, so they did the entire show to an empty audience, except for me and the stage manager. Wow! And the show started, and the first chord started, and I immediately burst out into tears. And by the end of it, I was a complete mess. I could barely talk yeah. to Michael and all of them afterwards. Yeah. And, you know, and I was so proud of Rebecca for the great work that she was doing just at the put-in. Right. And you know, and from that, you only get better. And so it was really, really exciting. I like the idea of, of Danny Burstyn, the King of Broadway, just having a show performed just for him. <laughs> I think that's how, that's how it should be. The King on of your, Broadway. On your days off. I like yeah, that you should, moniker, be able, you should be able to just go around yeah. on your in your moments off yeah. and just have any show performed <laughs> for you. I don't know. Probably. I hate that you guys can't get to see all this yeah. theater we get to see yeah. because you're doing theater. You know what I mean? You're, you're part true. of it. So so you miss out a lot. The King of Broadway. I like yeah, yeah, like yeah. the I'm Duchess. Gonna, I'm going to go with that. And, uh, and uh, Audrey <laughs> McDonald like, called Mama Broadway. So oh, that's yeah, good. Yeah, there's different. Yeah, especially now. She, exactly. See, That's I predicted really, that. I'm very, very happy for that. <laughs> I know, it's exciting. So, but, but when Rebecca was here, she talked about how you communicate, you can't speak much. So, no, I don't. So I immediately feel guilty yeah. that you're speaking now, right right now, because no. you have this great show to do, and then you're going to go to the OCC, you down yeah. with OCC, remember OPP? <laughs> That's right. Uh, down OPP. with OCC, they, they could totally re revitalize their whole brand <laughs> with that song. But um, you're going to give a speech there, yeah, and you're going to talk to a lot of people, speech, and a lot of people are going to tell you how great you are. Well. So there's a lot of talking on your plate. There so is, thank yeah. you for adding to that. Oh no! Um, but well, tell me about especially. this app. I was going to actually ask you if you just want to do the whole interview. Do we have your phone? <laughs> you want to just do it through the app? But I, I'm fine with it. I'll, I'm, I'm very open to. Yes, it's an app called Speak for Me, and, right? And uh, some t I use it uh, sometimes to communicate with my wife. Yes. Yes, because there's you know actually I got it from Sutton Foster. Oh okay. Because she she uh, had uh, was having vocal issues and she said you got to get this thing. And wow. And she said, of course, the first thing she did was do, you know, a bunch of curses, right. you know, just to her husband. And of course, so I had to do that first. <laughs> and, but then, you know, I, it's like, thank you, honey. I love you, honey. I, but mine actually has a British accent. So it's right. sort of like, thank you, darling. So fancy. That's basically what it sounds like. I love it. You know, and then, of course, I put in crazy things. I love you, you crazy wench. You know, thing, <laughs> things like that. Uh, and it's great. I highly recommend it. Is that your you. fantasy persona, like to be a British guy? Like, is that is that what you, what you really wish you were? Yes. That guy, or maybe she, maybe you're just, you're trying to turn her on, maybe. With yeah. Like a fancy <laughs> British right. guy. It's like, it's like having an affair. Like, That's I feel like true. A, like a, you know, That's right. sexing well, up the relationship. While we're making love, I could just see that. Oh, yes, darling. <laughs> do, do that. Oh, right there. You know, exactly. Weird thing is I love it. Stop <laughs> having sex for a while while you're pressing the button. But yes. I love that. So yeah, Fiddler on the Roof, how's it going? It's going great. Yeah. I'm so, so proud of this production. Yeah. You know, we've Beautiful. worked very, very, thank you so much. We've worked really, really hard on it. And um, I, I'm so proud of our director, Bartlett Shear, who's, yeah. uh, you know, wanted to make it different. When he found out he was doing Fiddler, he tried to make it as relevant mm -hmm. uh, to today as possible. Yeah. And um, I'm very proud of this production. I'm proud of what he did. 
Yeah. What's backstage life like at Fiddler? How's that? It's a great group of people. It is a great from group what I of know. People. I mean, yeah. I, I enjoy a lot of them. I mean, the, yeah. the, there's so many great personalities there in are. that theater. There's a lot of fun yeah. backstage. And you people talk don't know. You know, there's just so much kidding around. Right. And, uh, yeah. It's a great company. But you said especially when you do like a heavy show, I guess, right? People you sort have of to. Yeah. You have to have a release. You know, you do all that crying. Yeah. Uh, on stage, yeah, it's yeah. so sad yeah. every single night. Uh, Kelly O'Hara came to see the show the other night, and she texted me right afterwards. She said, "When you close that curtain on Chava, she said, I thought I would die. Mm. She was just in her seat crying so much, and you know, reactions like that mean the world to us. And uh, and then you walk off stage, and people are there being silly and funny right. and, and lifting yeah. up your spirits and right. being great friends. Right. And uh, it's a, it's an awful lot of fun. I'm glad Kelly O'Hara didn't die. That would have been yeah, terrible." Right. <laughs> That would have just been a terrible. <laughs> that really note, would have been bad. Yes. No, to this whole thing. And and you have gr you have great daughters and you have great. Uh, I do. Yeah. Son-in-laws and. Uh, Fantastic. All Every sorts single of family one family stuff happening. Brilliant, right? brilliant people. Brilliant yeah. actors. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Jessica Hecht, who I play yeah. opposite, uh, who I her absolutely. First musical. She was very nervous musical. to do a musical. Yeah, she was. So what's it been like? What's it been like for her and watching her sort of go through this whole process? It's, she's been wonderful. I, you know, if she had never said anything, I would have never known. Right. Right. But of course, because she was a little nervous at the beginning, uh, she mentioned it, but she just caught on to it so quickly. And, yeah. and I, I'm not a trained singer at all. I've never taken a singing lesson. It's all about, for me, it's about the lyrics more than anything else. And uh -huh. that's what I hold on to. And that's what I think um, I've continued to work. And people like uh, mm -hmm. uh, Sondheim and Harnick and Bach over the years and Kander and Ebb, that I've all, I've all worked with all of them, they've liked me because I think I uh, concentrate on the lyrics mm -hmm. more than anything mm -hmm. else and um, I can you know I can carry a tune but that's not where I you know put my focus like my wife opens her mouth uh -huh. and and this beautiful sound yes. and her heart falls out yeah. you know it's this beautiful thing I never had that huh. I could never do that for me it was always about you know making the story as clear as possible right. in the lyric about storytelling mm -hmm. and so that's where what I hold on to yeah before you took on the role of Fiddler, you talked about uh, sort of the responsibility of being a leader of a, show, of a yeah. show like that. When there's a big musical, and you've been in musicals where, like you talked about Alan Cumming at Cabaret, yeah. was very much like the leader of the company. Yeah. Do you feel like you're in that role now? I and do. what is it like to, to, to navigate that? For me, it's been about leading by example and right. trying to uh, show up every single day. Yeah. I'm usually the first one there, um, often the last one to leave. Uh, I try my best to do my best work every single night and make the show better and better. Mm -hmm. If somebody comes to see the show, you know, at one point and then maybe they come back a month or two later, I'll I hope that they'll see that not just my performance but the entire show has gotten stronger mm -hmm. and better. That's that's how I've tried to lead. Yeah. And and you gain the respect uh, of other people in the show by doing that, mm -hmm. by working hard and um, showing them. And uh, Jessica Heck does the exact same thing. Uh -huh. We're both, you know, used to being second bananas, mm. and now mm -hmm. we have this uh, wonderful opportunity. And we both are very much of this of the same mind. We go out there and try and play and listen and find new things every single night. Yeah. And I think it catches on and yeah. other people in the company see that and that it's not about personalities, mm -hmm. it's not about being a star, I don't even know what that means, mm -hmm. but it's about um, doing the work and showing up every day and having a great time and loving what you do. So yeah, you're the, you're the first banana now, but you're still a banana. Yeah, I'm you're still, definitely oh no, still a banana. About it. I tried to be a pineapple once, but uh, <laughs> I'm still a banana. <laughs> and you are uh, on billboards and phone booths and uh, the marquee. And you're, yeah. you're, you're, what's that? What's that? Are you very used to that now? Seeing your your yeah, face. Yeah, you places? know, I don't really think much about it. You know, because I still go home and have to change the cat box. Right. You know, <laughs> I'm still uh, a normal guy. I still, you know, people will see me and say hello on the subway, and you know, yeah. And I'm, you know, and I try and. I, I'm as normal, as I think, as, uh, as yeah. anybody else. I try to be. Yeah. I don't consider myself anything different than anybody else. Right. And I think, but I think that's actually helped me along the uh, along whatever my career to uh, just be myself. Yeah. And worry about the work more than anything else. You mentioned Kelly O'Hara, and you and Kelly O'Hara have something in common. First of all, you were both in um, South Pacific, yes. that beautiful production that Bart Sher did of South Pacific. Yes. You were both nominated for Tony Awards that year. Yeah. Neither of you won that year. Yeah. 
Kelly last year, after six nominations, yeah. we she won a she won a Tony Award. Yes, it happened, did. and everyone sort of compares you. They're like, Danny, Danny needs to win a Tony. <laughs> and you know, you know that I'm I'm passionate about this topic. Uh -huh. um, but I'm just a big fan, and I and I just love your career. Thank you. Uh, and I know you probably can't obsess over this. You're just I doing don't. your thing. No, yeah, just I know doing that. Your thing. I will just go up there and and have a great time, no matter what happens. Yeah, as I have done in the past. It, there's nothing bad about being nominated for right. a Tony Award. It's so much fun. Right. It's a great day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you get to walk the red carpet and speak to yes. people who are interviewing you from TV live in Japan. And, you know <laughs> what I mean? It's wacky. Right. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. Have and you and so Kelly talked about the Six Time Club? Is this a no? Is this a, this is not a topic. Club? No. It's not a topic. We're just no. obsessing over it. You and Kelly you know, aren't talking you know, about um, it. People like uh, Tom Aldridge, John McMartin, yeah. George C. Scott, yeah. all nominated for five okay. and never won. I, to, to think that I'm nominated for six, I mean, that's, that's plenty right there. Yeah. But, uh, you know, of course, if it happens, it happens, and that'd be great, too. But ultimately, I know I'm not going to change. Right. Um, you know, maybe I'll make a little more money down the line right, somewhere. Right. But I'm just going to be the same kind You're of You're not going to be a total D-bag if you win this year? <laughs> I don't have to worry no, about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just, just do the exact same stuff I always do. And I'll go to work and uh, finish out my contract and right. work as hard as I can yeah. on Fiddler and trying to make it better. What's crazy for me to think about is I, I always think of you as such a young guy. For some, some reason, yeah. I, I just, you, I don't know, Dan, maybe if you were Daniel Burstein. But Bur you're not, you, Danny. Maybe <laughs> if you were Daniel Burstein, maybe, maybe that would be. But you're or Danny, Debbie you're Danny. Burstein. You're just like, That's nice guy, Danny. I mean, and I've watched, your, I've watched you sort of rise up. Yeah. And, and it's crazy to think you're actually the oldest guy in the category. Correct? Am I? Yes, yeah, you're I the oldest thought guy in the category. I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry to break that to you. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> but it's just crazy to me. I can't wrap my head around that. Yeah. Um, you're the senior, you're, sen you're suddenly like, a, you have a sort of a senior position in this race. I, don't know, I it's know, kinda, it's funny. I know, I never thought I would be playing Tevia. You know? Right, I yeah. always thought that was for old guys. Right. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> I'm the old guy. Yeah. You know? Is there <laughs> intricate uh, shape work happening in that beard, or is this just, it's, it's just It's pretty it. much, I mean, every once in a while there's a stray hair and I'll, I'll <laughs> trim it. I did, I, at one point, I trimmed it way down. I trimmed yeah. like two inches off of it. Um, so it would be even longer uh, at this point. But, uh, you know, I just, just groom it every once in a while. I honestly Does it drive you crazy? No, not at all. No. The only thing is every once in a while when you're sleeping, you know, it'll get, your arm will get, you really have to pull your... It, it gets stuck to your it arm? It gets stuck, yeah. <laughs> What's in that beard? <laughs> <laughs> Are you using products? I'm sure you, you, people uh, give you products. And sometimes, yeah, people throw products at you <laughs> for your beard. It's true. You, you know, can become a sponsor maybe for one of those like hip Brooklyn maybe, beard products. Maybe. You know, Alan right? Cumming had his own, uh, he was sponsored by... I want to say it was Bacardi, and what? Bacardi would send him a box of booze. Amazing, uh, you know, because of Twitter, he would tweet yeah. about the Bacardi. Yeah. Every week, they would send a huge box of yeah. booze, wine, and all kinds of. You stuff. You need to harness your power as the king of Broadway. <laughs> I know, but what the hell would I do with all that beard product? I don't know. I don't <laughs> After. know. Just, just wear it proudly. I'd <laughs> smell really good. I mean, it'd be, yeah. so, it'd be so super fragrant. I'm sure. Yeah, so some of them are really incredible. Who's helping you with your fashion? Uh, a friend of ours, Milan Berton. He happens right. to be a wonderful, yes. uh, brilliant international designer, but he's also uh, a great friend and right. has been for a long time. You also could have like a beard, a beard product A beard product sponsor, product, I guess you know, so. And you could tell the live Japanese crew yes. who put your beard together. <laughs> exactly, Milan Beardton, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, this year's, this year's Tonys are crazy because of that Hamilton show, right? I mean, it's just kind of like Hamil that what? one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know you were yes. up for it. I know it's touchy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Philippa Sue. Yeah, it's, she it's, got it. it. <laughs> um, I, I'm actually, I'm, I'm thrilled for Lin-Manuel. Uh, yeah. It couldn't happen to a nicer, more talented guy. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. He's such a fantastic, fantastic guy. Yeah. And, you know, he deserves everything he, he gets. You know, the cool thing about it is you get to meet a lot of people, right? You get yeah. to meet all these other nominees, yeah. and you keep getting shoved together at different social events. Yeah. Like, you guys had that private lunch event, right? Where you, where you actually get your plaque. Oh, yeah. That, that, what, what was that like? That's, 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 a, that's a no press event. So, yeah. tell uh, me what happened in there. Did you all talk about how annoying the press is? Or? No, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just Just kidding. the opposite. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's just hanging out, talking. And Who'd you sit and with? Who did I sit they with? They sit people together. I know. I sat with Andrew Lloyd Webber's wife. Okay. I sat with Todd Hames, who's an old friend from yeah, the roundabout, who I love. Yeah. Um, Lynn, 
Manuel. Oh, okay. Um, Jeff Daniels. Okay, that's a fancy table. Uh, it was. It was, and there were more, you know, people like that all around. Oh, and uh, Renee Elise Goldsbury. She oh. was uh, next to me. Nice, and lovely, lovely. Hadn't met her before. Nice. It's that kind of thing where you just and you just talk about the experience. How are you holding up? Right. You know, it's, yeah. uh, Everybody's a little bit tired, but a li also uh, so jazzed from all right. the excitement. Yeah. Uh, it's it's it was really really. It's always a lovely lovely event. Right. And uh, just had a. Um, a uh, round table. Oh yeah, for the Hollywood, Hollywood reporter. reporter. Yeah, I saw your and that I was saw a pretty photo fantastic. Online of that. Yeah, with uh, also with Jeff Daniels and Alex Brightman, Leslie Odom, and um, Gabriel Byrne. A lot of great, great people. Reed Bernie, who's an old pal. Yeah. Um, it was really, you know, just just talking about the business, about uh, how hard it is to do your show every single night, your fears, your your triumphs. It's that kind of stuff is is uh, lovely. Yeah. And you also can't believe you're having these conversations with these uh, brilliant, brilliant actors who you've admired your whole yeah. life. But that's always the theme. The theme is always like, how are we doing this show every night and doing all this, right? I mean, yeah. that, that's like the hard thing about Broadway. It is. And, and it feels like it's only just amplified now because I, I feel like 20 years ago there were less events that that the actors were doing yeah, based on what I know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now it's like, you, you have like a full, it's like, you're a Tony nominee, here's your social calendar, and you're like, whoa. Whoa, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I can't do five different things. <laughs> right, and then, and then do your show at night. Yeah, exactly. That's the hard, I mean, it's hard now. And do the show really well because Tony voters are coming. Exactly. That's the other thing. And then the show is, I mean, for me, if it's not like I was uh, in a featured category yeah. or, or a play, uh, but in a musical, doing a show that is three hours long where you're singing and yeah. speaking and screaming for three hours. I'm only off stage for 13 minutes in the entire wow, show. Wow, 13 minutes. And when I am off stage, I'm busy changing clothes. Yeah. I'm trying to get a sip of, wiping sweat off of everything. Yeah. And a mic, the mic's gone out. Putting your product in, putting your sponsor. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> for my sponsor. <laughs> Doing a commercial, shooting a commercial <laughs> in that time. Uh, you know, it's, it's maddening, but it's exhilarating and exhausting all at the same time. You know, I was thinking about the last time we did one of these interviews, it was four and a half years ago. Really? And you, and you got four nominations since then. Wow. <laughs> at that time, you were a two-time Tony nominee. Really? Yeah, look at this. I mean, it's crazy, this, this, uh, it's this been career of yours. Six and ten years. Yeah. yeah it's that's nuts. That is nuts. So what's your, like, ideal career or someone to emulate or I don't know. Like, what, if you, do you ever think that way or you just sort of stay in the moment? Um, I don't really think that way. I, I just try to go from good project to good project. Right. And it could be a film, uh, it could be a TV thing. Yeah. Uh, I've gotten to the point where I'm, I'm trying to be more selective and do things that mm -hmm. are, uh, that really uh, make my juices flow and excite yeah. me and scare me a bit. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's where I am. I have a film coming out called Indignation. I know, I want to talk about that. Um, I watched the trailer. You're yeah. the guy chopping the meat, correct? Yes. You're in the trailer. <laughs> I saw you. I'm a meat a chopper. Big, you're, yeah. a, you're a butcher. Or a butcher. Yes. You're, you're like a Jewish butcher, right? Exactly and, right. And what is the, tell me what this movie is. What's the plot of it? It's, uh, based, it's based on a Philip Roth novel, yeah. also called Indignation. Right. It's written by James Seamus. He also directed it. James Seamus wrote uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, oh, okay. uh, The Ice Storm, and produced a zillion films. A cool. Wonderful, wonderful, brilliant, brilliant guy. And honored to be in the film. Uh, Linda Eamon is also right. in the you're, film. You're a cabaret, uh, yeah. cabaret lover. Logan Lerman plays this young, our son. Uh -huh. He's uh, an unusual character. He's ridiculously bright. Okay. And yet, and he wants to be his own man and goes off to college and experiences some uh, difficulties. And okay. uh, and we're you know tr more traditional. Mm -hmm. Sounds familiar. Uh, we're more traditional. It's a beautiful story. It's beautifully beautifully written. I'm very proud of it. Did you see the finished product? I have not. You haven't? No. So it was at, it was like Sundance, right? I think yes, it, was, it yeah. went to Sundance. Yeah. Went to several others. And, and they're having out? the movie premiere in July. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's exciting. Yes, and he wrote, James just wrote to me recently. He goes, I made sure it was on a Monday. So, <laughs> so you could be See? there. Yeah. Very considerate. I like that. Good man. So that, that's exciting. So you want to do is. more of that? You want to like sort of branch out? and It is. I, I just uh, filmed that I did just opened uh, a month ago called The Family Fang. Uh, oh, yeah. You know what? Uh, I saw that on my uh, I saw that on my Apple TV. The trailer looks really cool. Yeah. It's yeah, an yeah, interesting it looks really film. Cool. That I, I did see. Uh, so that's on demand Jason now, Bateman, right? And it's in theaters? Exactly right. Okay, cool. Both. Yeah, and uh, Jason Bateman. I have a couple of scenes with uh, Nicole Kidman. Nice, awesome. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So that so that's great. Everything's happening. 
Yeah, things are popping. Film you work know. and Tony nominations and yeah, yeah. you know, I, I just I loved those I loved those scripts. Yeah. And that's why I went after those yeah. uh, projects. That's that's sort of where I am now, just yeah. trying to find those kinds of interesting scripts. And if as far as my what kind of a career yeah. I would like, I'm I guess I'm having it. Yeah. You know, I'm just doing whatever I wanted to do when I was, you know, thirteen when I first thought about all this. Yeah. I'm I finally made it to that point. And I don't I never, I sort of made a pact with the devil. I said, you know, I don't care about money, fame, or anything like that. I just want to go out there and do good work and have the respect of my peers. That's all that I ever wanted. Those were my goals. Mm -hmm. I know how your wife is. How are your boys? They're great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, my, my uh, older son is producing films. Yeah. And cool. he even had a film at Cannes oh, nice. this year, this month. Uh, did he go a out short there for film? It? No, he didn't because he's producing commercials right he's now. Too busy. He's too busy. Too for many con. things are happening. <laughs> and my younger son is uh, transferring to Hunter College from oh, Queens cool. College, where he was, uh, going into uh, psychology and social work. And wow. Yeah, they're both doing really, really, really well. I'm so ridiculously proud of them. Do they like Fiddler? Do they? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they love Fiddler. <laughs> they love it. You know, that's a great kind of thing. You know, when you when your kids come, they they. Uh, been a been great arbiters of uh, of uh, taste for me over the years. Right. They, you know, they come to see things and they go, I don't know about this, that, or you know. But they absolutely loved, loved, loved Fiddler. Good, and uh, you know, want to come back all the time. So they and will be honest with you if they don't like something. Oh yeah, completely, yeah. and and give me notes and you know. And oh say, really? This moment, I don't know. If they give you notes about certain moments. I love oh, that. Oh sure, you know. Do and they I work out scenes with you at home? I trust and them. No. Now let's run that scene again. Come on, <laughs> yeah, <now>. I know. <laughs> Mm, I don't believe you. Uh, I'll no. be Sarah Paulson. Let's exactly. do that scene again. But they're very honest, and that's you know I, the way I raise them, and I think they're 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 great. Yeah. So uh, Tony Knight, how are you going to be feeling like when we get are you, at this point? Um, you just must you must know exactly how to go into that night, right? Emotionally, it's just kind of like getting through the yeah whatever happens. Are you performing happens. on the Tony. Yeah. Nice. It's, there's a lot. Are you going to be know. doing the. Yeah, and the there's a rehearsal at eight o'clock, you know, seven o'clock yeah, in the morning, crazy. eight o'clock that morning. Yeah, it's an all-day marathon. It's an so you're all exhausted day. by the time the Tonys start. Yes, <laughs> and then you have to, and you know, I think we're doing a, a commercial bumper as well. Nice, okay. And uh, and perform. I can't. I don't. I can't give away too much. Yeah, you don't. Don't, don't but, tell me uh, But yeah, there's a lot Is that's there going on that day for me to do. And, and but you know, it's it's Tony Awards. Awards. Exactly. It's your dream. Thirteen year old. This is exactly, exactly it. Yeah. Respect of your peers. Well. Yeah, I mean, I never dreamt of Tony Awards, I'll be honest with you. I never thought about that. That yeah. was never part of the equation. But what a lovely thing to happen. Yeah. And so what about it in here on Tony Night? Is there a speech sitting in here? Absolutely not. No, no speech? No. What about the last five times? Was there a, was there a speech no, sitting? There never. Never. Was. never. Never a speech? Never. No. Practicing in front of the mirror or just all in your heart? It's all uh, in your head and your heart? Uh, yes. That's it. If, it. if something does happen, I, you know, I, I, I hopefully will say the right things or yep. make a complete fool out of myself. That's fun too. I actually it's love that. Happens. Or do the worm. <laughs> or, or do the worm. Like Kelly did. Maybe some tears. I, I enjoy tears. So okay, you know, I'll see just, what I can do. Just, you know, I, mean, I don't want to force it. If it, if it, if not it fake tears, but you know, <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just, this is for that, Paul. <laughs> it, it'll happen at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, uh, yeah. I love having you. I love talking to you. Same um, here, Paul. It's so great Always. to see you. And I love seeing you in award season. Award season is not the same without Danny Burstein. Dang. <laughs> we like that. So you go get that OCC. I will. Then do that speech. Uh, everyone, check out Fiddler on the Roof at the Broadway Theater. Not a Broadway theater. The, the Broadway, Broadway theater. theater. It's that really big one. We're, we're Ethel Merman open Gypsy. I know. It's, uh, is that ridiculous? Sometimes I think same when I'm on room? stage, uh, I have no idea. We don't know. I have no idea. I'll, I'll smell in the corners. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, you know, sometimes when I'm on stage singing "Rich Man," yeah. I'm thinking right here, Ethel Merman sang "Rose's Turn." It's so cool. It's amazing. It is. So check that out and think about Ethel Merman and watch this guy. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for being here, Danny. Of course, Paul. Thank Thanks. you for watching. We'll see you next time.